Okay, we're going to get started with our um, agenda meeting for this evening. In fact, I think I'm going to uh, go a little bit out of order here. Uh, we have two items that are going to require uh, the solicitor uh, involvement. One first one is under other business, resolution number 23, with a resolution covering the disposition of vehicles. We have some old surplus trucks, uh, backhoes, and things of that nature. Normally, in order to sell them, we have to advertise them for bid, and in the past when we've done that, um, we have had problems with not getting anybody to bid on it. So taking a page out of the book of some of the school districts, most recently uh, Upper Chichester, we will be bringing them to Wilson Auction. We're going to auction them off. That's the best way to get the most competitive bid. In order to do so, we need to have a resolution. So we have resolution number 23. That's correct. Which is the disposition of the vehicles, and it basically authorizes um, us to bring them to the auction house, and they're either owned by the Public Works or the Sewer Department. We have six older machines. They're too costly to repair and no longer serviceable. We have a 1997 Ford tractor loader backhoe, 2007 Ford Explorer truck, a 2001 Ford F450 dump truck and plow with spreader, 1997 Ford F-Series truck and a 2001 Chevrolet Silverado and a John, 2005 John Deere utility terrain vehicle. And uh, there's exhibits that uh, describe all of them. So I would need a motion to approve resolution number 23 of 2020. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Resolution number 20, pardon? Have to follow the follow the Wilson, uh, Wilson auction website. Yeah, yeah. It'll, It'll be in March. We'll, we'll be bringing everything over there. It'll be out in the front yard, and then um, highest bidder sold. And and just so the record's perfectly clear, if Wilson would decide not to accept a vehicle or one of the vehicles is not uh, purchased at the auction, uh, the resolution also provides um, guidance to the township manager to go within the state who has a process of bidding uh, statewide to see if we can move the vehicles. You got you. I, I, there's, a back, there's a backhoe <laughs> with your name on it. There you go. <laughs> anyway, um, resolution number 24 is authorizing the appropriation of a right-of-way easement for three sanitary sewer laterals on, over or through property here and after, after described in Concord Township and the filing of the necessarily declaration of taking. As part of the Penn's Grand Sewer Project, I think there's three homes that can tie in to a sewer line via gravity at the rear of their property that is in the open space of Concord Wood. Gentlemen, if I say anything out of turn, please correct me. Uh, we have approached them to purchase an easement from them in order to buy that right of way. We do have right of way there for probably four or five need three more. Uh, we seem to be at uh, odds with the HOA, and uh, we are going to be authorizing the township solicitor, if required, to file <coughs> condemnation proceedings in order to buy yeah. that easement. And just and by point of clarification, there's still communication uh, between the township and the HOA, um, and there has been some movement, so hopefully we can get it resolved. But I and, and I don't, I'm not looking to pass this this evening. I'm just, you know, keeping you apprised of, of where we are, and this would be ready to go um, at the public meeting on next Tuesday. So you're not asking us to vote on this this evening? I am not. Okay, so that will not be voted on this evening. Time, time will tell. Okay. Um, what else? We got anything else here for you, Yui? I don't think so. We're good, right? And I just, just the, uh, at the next meeting also, the Carilla uh, property, uh, will be coming up for the approval of the subdivision, and that will be on your agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next thing we do is we caucus with the Planning Commission. Mr. Juleson, I think you have uh, two projects that we're going to be seeing at our meeting next week. How do you guys want to handle it? You want to put it up on the screen, or what do you want to do? Let's see. There we go. Jeez. Um... So, Carilla, um, we 
Planning Commission recommended approval at their meeting last night. And out of further rich, if he wants to add any commentary, um, in short, this site is located uh, at the intersection, I'll zoom into the map here, located at the intersection of Namens Creek Road and Powell Road in the southwest quadrant of the township. Um, if we go back out to that full plan. Uh, previously, a proposal for, I believe, four or five or six different concepts of townhouses was proposed for this site. Um, the township has uh, negotiated as announced last month with the property owner. The township will be purchasing approximately 1.7 acres of the tract on the western portion. The remaining smaller portion here will remain with the house on the site there. Uh, so the plan will be on the agenda for council in March to approve. It's been submitted to the county. Um, the design engineer for Corella completed the plan uh, on the township's behalf. We worked with their office to get all the proper notation on the plan. Uh, the Planning Commission did not have any comments, uh, Rich, I, I don't believe there was anything uh, on, on your end. Uh, county Planning, uh, we are awaiting comments. Again, they're aware of the acquisition, and again, do not anticipate any com comments from the County Planning Commission for this as well. Uh, nothing's proposed currently for this portion of open space. Uh, it's the headwaters of Concord Creek. There's some wetlands. Um, I believe we're going to take a look at that tract with maybe one of our experts from the Newland Grist Mill, one of our partners, just to take a look at maybe invasives or other plantings on that site at some point in the future. Otherwise, uh, maybe a fence uh, to separate from the residential property and put up open space signs. But otherwise, I, I think fairly passive here. So that's the short version. Recommended this? Yes. Okay. For you, that's board, which the land development. Development. Up on the screen, we can do it. Got it. I think mm -hmm. there was one issue with the setback. Sure. Right away. Yep. So uh, the plan is on the screen. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily need to rehash everything the, con uh, the conditional use hearing testimony just spoke to, obviously. Um, the, the probably the two or three, probably two issues we talked with at the planning commission. First was um, the building setback. Um, we requested that they move, the, they modify the building location to meet their setback from the ultimate right of way. Um, what that does is it has to slide this building back a little bit further. But what it allows for if, and there is no plan, but if 202 were to ever to be widened, it would give us some flexibility in the location of where the building is versus the widened road. So on a 202, 1 and 322 corridors, we always seek to meet building setback requirements from this kind of imaginary line, but it's called the ultimate right-of-way line uh, for 202. Uh, the second discussion issue was the, the parking scenario, which they brought up. Uh, Planning Commission did not necessarily have any issues with that, um, and we're generally supportive of the, the reserve parking concept. Um, I think our code and the conditional use aspect gives us plenty of flexibility for that. Um, if, if anything, it's probably something we should be taking a closer look with more projects, and maybe even make our code, uh, maybe something to consider in the future, amending our code to make it, you know, some sort of incentive for some of the developers as well. So um, I think that's a positive. Uh, Rich, was there anything else to Planning Commission? The exception was they were going to be the vehicles will be the size of the other issue was traffic in the neighborhood if you look at the plans of it's not conducive coming to this not going to come back uh, if it's going to be staggered because surgeries are so I don't think there's going to be and, and if I may as you know these are moving on two parallel paths both the conditional use and the land development so it, it would be best uh, not to, to, to consider them together at your March 10th meeting Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the short version. Um, last comment would be they are requesting a waiver from preliminary final. I think the, plan, the plans are in final condition. Uh, we had a meeting at PennDOT's King of Prussia office this afternoon about their HOP, and we, we sorted out all the issues with PennDOT, so I don't anticipate any issues with PennDOT at this point. Um, you know, there are some outstanding comments in the various review letters, generally all in minor in nature, so we'd recommend that those be conditions of any approval, and then when we would confirm that those issues had been resolved prior to the plans being recorded at the county. Thank you, gentlemen.
that under advisement as part of the conditional use approval because Todd, like you said, there's nine and nine, so we just take it from there and move it to five. And it's always better to do that when they left. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Do we want to? I don't think anybody's interested in that. We could probably skip that one. <laughs> All right. Well, I wasn't prepared for a grandiose presentation, but uh, we do we do have a lot of people here, so I'll try to give as much input as I can on it for tonight. Um, for those that don't know, my name is Nate Klein. I work at Pannoni. We're the township engineer. Um, I'll try to speak clearly. I do speak quickly. Um, I will try to answer as many questions as I can with the information I have. I do have a plan. I believe it was in the back. If anybody needs one and we have extra copies. So I'm gonna reference this plan, and if everybody can bear with me, what I'll try to do is just give a brief overview of the project in general, and then I can sp speak to some of the history of the project, where we're at, and where this project is going. Um, so we'll start with that. Yes. So first, um, we are scheduling an open house on this project for the entire community. Um, currently, that's planned for probably, most likely, um, late April, we're just trying to confirm the date with all parties. So there'll be an announcement, we'll put that out on all the social media, the emails, et cetera. So there will be an open house on this project, it'll be open to everybody, it'll be advertised in the paper, et cetera. Um, what this project, I, so the overall project consists really of three, three different kind of projects. First, this is Garnet Valley High School. So going across the plan, this is Smithbridge Road going west to 202, okay, Smithbridge Road. This is the high school entrance. Here's the volleyball, or the tennis courts going to the high school. This right here is Bethel Road and Station Road. This is the Township Park Library entrance to the middle school and elementary school complex. And then we have Temple and Kirk Road on this side, okay? This project actually started as kind of a kernel of an idea, which was adding left turn lanes on Smithbridge Road into the high school site. Anybody that drives in this area during school, call it school rush hour, knows the delays that happen at that time. So actually, as part of PennDOT's, PennDOT's approval, and go back and go back another 10 years maybe, this intersection was realigned, if everybody remembers when we realigned that intersection. Actually, as part of that approval, one of the conditions of approval was that the school district, not the township, not the state, the school district, would install these left turns into their high school entrance, okay? So that was a condition of the original approval. There was a time date on that. When that time date approached, the school district said, hey, we're looking into this. This is costing a lot of money. You know, what are we gonna do here? The township and the school district collaborated, and what we came up with was, hey, you know, is there some grant money out there? Can we find some funding to help everybody figure this out? Well, to be honest, I cannot find grant funding to get a left turn into the school district. That was not a viable option. So what we considered was a trail system in this area that was consistent with the ongoing uh, township-wide greenways plan. So what we decided to do was add a trail, a trail plan into this concept. It essentially connects, again, the high school complex, there's a, essentially a small bridge right here, up there access, along Smithbridge Road, across this intersection, across this intersection, down to this intersection. The trail will be on the south side of the Smithbridge Road within the right-of-way. At the intersection of Allen Circle, or Allen Drive, and Bob Mensch Drive, there would be a push-button pedestrian crossing, so people could cross Smithbridge Road with a flasher, um, so that would be activated on a push-button basis um, to, to cross the road there. That project was then conceived. The, the timing, if I check my notes here, the timing on it, just to go back, just to go back and see when we started this, was originally, uh, 2016, we started the design as an HOP project, a standard, a standard small project with PennDOT. In 2017, um, as announced at various meetings and discussed at various meetings, we applied for what's called a CMAC grant. CMAC is Congestion, Mitigation, and Air Quality. It's issued by DVRPC. DVRPC is the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. So the money comes from the state, all right? The state money came in and said, hey, we'll give you money for your left turn and the trail. Great. Millions of dollars, well, I should say millions, I think million plus to do that. So, again, we started working on that project. Into that project, about a year, PennDOT approached us and said, hey, we have money to remove traffic signals and put in roundabouts. We did a study that says a roundabout would improve the operation of this intersection. If we gave you funding for this, would you be willing to, to install this roundabout as part of this project? 
That goes back to 2018. So we discussed that and in 2018, we got a million dollars of funding, give or take, all from PennDOT to construct that roundabout. So that roundabout will be constructed at the intersection of Smith Ridge, Bethel, and Kerr. So again, reboot the project, include this as part of the project, had to kind of pivot slightly. And since then, we've been kind of working in earnest and we have this designed. Um, we are working on permitting with PennDOT. And frankly, the next step is, is really open house and um, contacting various owners, property owners, where we need either easements for construction or uh, property uh, off of property. Uh, a lot of this property is either school district or township property, if you can imagine. There's some HOA property and there's some individual properties. Um, there's not a significant right-of-way take on any of these properties. It's mostly easements, things of that nature. Um, and that will be the next step in the process. So there'll be letters going out to affected property owners uh, in the near future in advance of the open house, again, most likely late April. And that will be the next step in this process. Um, Construction-wise, right now in working with the school district, who is the partner with the township on this, um, in discussion with them, they've asked us to see if we can schedule this from a construction standpoint in the summer of 2021 so as to avoid uh, school season. So we're working with the funding of PennDOT and DVRPC. We think they're going to be willing to do that. So we think that's where this is going to line up from a construction standpoint. Um, one of the elected officials um, asked me about uh, the bridge further west on Concord Road. Um, that is a bridge that is also being replaced. That is a PennDOT project. So we'll be working with them on when that's going to be scheduled so that we can make these projects kind of fit together. Um, in theory, uh, depending on what, what their schedule is going to be for replacing that Smithbridge Road culvert. Um, roundabouts, I, I, I apologize, I, I don't have a big speech on roundabouts and the technicalities of them tonight. Uh, there's certainly a wealth of information, probably good and bad, on the internet. Um, I will tell you there's probably three or four in Chester County in various rural areas. Uh, we, we as Pannoni actually designed and, and helped construct the one in Aston Township um, that recently went in next to the DCIU. Um, there's one in, in Delaware County at Swarthmore College. It was a, it was a very complicated project. Yes, it was. Um, so, you know, roundabouts are something that's happening. Um, but again, this is something that PennDOT's, you know, had money for and is providing the money for the roundabout. And I think it's, it's certainly going to be a safer intersection. Um, it, and, and that's, I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah, it's, it's. It, yeah, well, the, the facts are uh, uh, roundabouts are certainly safer. And what we'll do is when we have the open house, we'll bring some more information on roundabouts. And as this project proceeds, what we'll do is we'll get some of the, you know, the videos and the safety information and the studies. We'll get that out there and start pushing that information out over the ne next year just to educate everybody. Because I think, unfortunately, it seems to be something that, that for some reason, the negative reaction, maybe the old horror stories of, of Jersey kind of stuff. But that's not what we're dealing with here. Uh, this so is kind of a not, new day and putting, age. We're not going to put a diner anywhere near here or anything like that. And no. No. It's like Jersey always has a diner by a circle, so. Um, and, and the roundabouts, one second, just a couple, couple more things before I finish up. Um, the roundabouts are absolutely designed for truck traffic and school buses, 100% without question. Um, also, the historic building on the northeast corner of the intersection is staying in place, will not be touched. We've tried to work all the design to maintain that property there. Um, there's very little impact to that, and that was one of PennDOT's requirements. We have to go through a significant archaeological and environmental review with PennDOT that's taken 18 months, and that was one of the things they looked at. They were on site with us. We had to meet their experts on site. We had to show them what the impacts would be, what they would not be, things of that nature. Um, so I, I don't know if there's specific questions. Council has first, maybe before if I, you know, if you want me to answer more questions tonight, we want to hold for the open house. I, I'm certainly well, flexible. I, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the open house. And the plan was, as Nate said, to have that sometime in April. Uh, I don't know if anyone was involved. 322 project. But when PennDOT would have their open houses, they would have an overall plan like this. And then they would break it down into segments so there were smaller groups. So if you were more interested in what's going on at the roundabout, somebody there to focus on answering if you had concerns about Bethel Road, somebody could answer your questions. We're trying to, PennDOT doesn't get a lot of things right, but the 322 public meetings, they actually did a pretty good job about breaking it down into subsets since it was such an involved process. So we hope to uh, duplicate that process when this comes along. Uh, one other thing is, Nate, and correct me if I'm wrong, we, we were fortunate that PennDOT is paying for this whole thing. I mean, we didn't go out and solicit money for this. Yeah, and I, I probably didn't touch on the numbers too specifically, but if, if I run, run the numbers real quick, I mean, at the end of the day, the entire project, and this is the world we're living in, but the entire construction project of this is going to be north of $3 million. How much are we and the township's cost is probably going to be about 10% of that. Okay. 
And the school district. And the school district will also be contributing 10% of that. Yeah, and the school district's contributing. There. Or uh, maybe about five. Uh, but we, we um, the one in Aston, I agree. That took way too long. I understand they had some utility, utility issues conflicts. there. Uh, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn, and I think my colleagues would reinforce this. Uh, we got to make sure everything is identified before we put a shovel in the ground. Because when this thing starts, uh, that was the school district's concern too, that it's got to be done over the summer. Now, it might go into the fall, but it might be grading along the roadways. Cool. The thing's got to be up and running. Yeah, and I think, just to clarify, I think when I say, you know, the summer construction is what I envision, the, the closures, detours, really the meat of the construction. My hope is that sometime over the winter we'd be doing, you know, utility relocations, things of that nature to get started to tee that up. So. And I think another project we are considering, but probably not the same time as this, is the small bridge on uh, Temple Road. Yeah, yeah so uh, we, we think okay. we can make that about another 18 inches bigger. Yes. Yep. So as. Yeah. What was that? Uh, how? Red, red and even, just let the well, wheel go around. Yeah. Maybe we'll hit the lot. Well, all right, so yeah, sorry, just real quick on that. We, we, we did look at the Temple Road culvert, and that's the culvert closer to the roundabout, not the bridge all the way up closer to um, Meadow Run, that little culvert there by the school district access. Just so we're all talking the same thing. So what we're going to do is, we are, what we're going to do is, we're actually going to do that this summer most likely as part of the road program. So what we're going to do is relocate the guide rail, move the guide rail further out, do some additional paving there, so make that two-way. We really, we were looking at maybe making that one way, it's just not safe because of the hill, so we're gonna make that two-way widen that slightly. So that would most likely be a summer road program-ish type project, is my expectation right now. Yes. Cool. Yeah, so, no, that's all great questions. So what we're gonna do is a couple things, and maybe I didn't I buried the lead slightly. Again, we'll have pedestrian crossing here. So again, this is right in front of the library, okay? That sidewalk is gonna take you all the way back to the middle school as well. So the school district sites are gonna be completely connected, okay? When you get to the roundabout, we're gonna stay away from the historic property, but we're gonna loop the sidewalk around all three other corners. In a perfect world, I would love to take the sidewalk or this path all the way down the Fox Hill Farms front door, all the way down to the Concord Road Bridge. That's a project for another day if people want it. Um, but for now, we're going to at least get it to here, and then, again, maybe that's another access to the, to the future use of the Coleman Tract. Well, I think you also heard as part of the um, story of healthcare, we're making them put sidewalks in. They will probably be one of the few there that have it. Eventually, someone else is going to build, and we'll all start connecting. Over there on Larkin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the uh, so, oh, and the backhoe will go around there. But, well, just so. Yeah, and I think. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be crosswalked, sidewalk paths, and three corners of this. But I got to be honest. What our focus is going to be on making this the safest point to cross. So, you know, funneling pedestrian and bike traffic to here because we'll have a push button flasher to cross Smith Bridge Road to stop traffic there. So, they'll be like, can you? They'll be, you, you push a button and you get like the flashing beacons that come up. Anybody heads past where Rowan University, old Glassboro State, and they have those things if you're going to the shore on 322, you push the button and those big lights go off. It'll be That's something along those lines, those, those depending lines. on what PennDOT lets us do. What? So every time um, yeah. A person or a bike, yeah. Okay, we'll see how that goes. But it will be a walkable situation, what you keep going. Okay, I Correct. know we didn't answer everyone's questions, but bring them on. Let's talk about it. This, we are going to have another meeting on this, and it'll be a lot more in-depth. But come on up. No, come on. How are you? Hi there, how are you? Good. Um, my name's Mike. My first question is with which it's an not completely on and off ramp. That's going to impact the traffic pattern. So whatever traffic analysis was done when the roundabout was designed, I think that there may be some that was 
Interesting question. I, I didn't complete that. PennDOT did, um, but we can certainly take a look and see what well, assumptions they made on we're that. Not, we're not Keep in mind, Smith Ridge and 322 don't. There's no interchange or. I know, but you know how when a highway, a yeah, new road I, gets built, everybody finds their own way. Yeah. Ways finds a way. I, I just think if, that if any, the traffic I, I'd like, patterns. That's we, we should get a count on that now. But I, I'm thinking when the highway is in its two lanes both ways, I think we might see less on our local roads. I tend to, I tend to, I, I tend to agree, but I, I, the question I don't have an answer to, but we can get these study from PennDOT and see what I they know, consider. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just have a quick question. So when the work is getting done, how can we assure that the traffic isn't going to be diverted that three, four months that you complete the work to neighborhoods where our children are playing? Yeah, Nate, so how are you going to do that? I want to stand there. That's going to be a challenge. I don't. I won't. I won't disagree. Yeah, it's a very, we're going to create detour plans. You know, we're required to create detour plans that Penn that has to approve. We know this community. We, we're going to try to keep everybody in the state roads. We're going to sign everything appropriately. We're going to have to work with our state police to help us enforce if we run into issues. There's going to be detours and there's going to be closures. That that's the truth. But we're going to try and you know minimize that time and that pain as much as we possibly can. Man, which which that's which a fair question, though. Neighborhood do you live in? I live in Concord Hunt, and I think it's really it, there would have to be some really reassurance that the it, traffic, because that's a long time, a lot of traffic, that I think people are going to use mm -hmm. our neighborhood as please, a cutthroat. Please come when we have the bigger meeting, because I think we'd like to sit down with you and anybody on that community. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe we almost close those off to local traffic. Yeah, we, we have some we have some tools in the toolbox. Ultimately, the detour has to be on state roads. We can't even use Temple Road yeah. as a detour. We have to use state roads for the detour. So, you know, we're going to do that, but uh, your concern is definitely warranted. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we can look at that. All right. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Name, please. Concord Hunt as well. Um, my, I don't have a great understanding of roundabouts, but everyone I've ever been on and in How is that possible? We're going to shift the entire intersection, essentially. I, I see that, but you have a clear view. That's all that overgrowth property mm -hmm. blocking you, which is the whole reason why that intersection is dangerous. Right. So we're going to shift the entire intersection to the south, southwest. And what that's going to do is that's going to pull the road away from that house. And that's going to create that clear zone. There's minimum requirements for both the speed, the slope of the road, that we have to that have to be met to make those those curvatures work, um, and we can get into more detail when we have the open house. I'll get some more detailed plans for you. Um, yeah, and the more the more you shift that, the more it eats into Concord Hunts. We're, and we're, which we're again we're trying to find that balance of the historic house, the open space, and, and it's it's a puzzle we've been working with, and we're trying to minimize that. We we didn't want to shift anything closer to any house than we had to, um, and we think we found the right spot right now. Are we doing this for safety, or we're doing this because Garnet Valley High School didn't want to pay for a turning lane? Now, this has nothing to do, they're, com money. they're completely separate projects. They just happen to be joined together for a funding mechanism. Com com it yeah, sounded no like it was explained that because they had to put a left lane in, because of the yeah. Bethlehem Station, they never did the, what they never did yeah, the turn lane. You guys had to find money. That's not the they case, found no. money by, by doing walking. No, it was, it was a combination of the trails and the turning lane. The roundabout was a completely separate thing that we were approached by PennDOT. The, the roundabout had nothing to do with the school district. And again, we, yes, sir. Come on. My name is Sam Coniglio. Um, I have a question about, about um, my understanding is that um, the roundabout, was there any consideration taken into the different flow of traffic going down Smith Bridge in comparison to the traffic that travels from Kirk to Temple in volume? Roundabouts typically don't work too well if you have even flows. You have a tendency to have a lot of flow coming down Smith Bridge have less flow coming from the other directions, the gaps change. You have gap changes, you have slowdown in traffic. So I'm assuming that you had a plan putting this in to alleviate the traffic problem. Um, how big is the circle? What size vehicle did you actually plan it for? Is what, what do buses and trucks do? Are they going to is there going to be an allotment in the circle for them to ride over since they can't traverse, say, 90 by another mm -hmm. circle. What vehicle did you yeah, I, and was I, there any consideration into uh, putting in turning lanes? Why are you going this route right away? Is it because of a study that was done by PennDOT 10 years ago that said this was a great place to put a big fat circle? 
Right. So I have several questions. The, the turning lanes is, some, that is something that's been on our radar for years. Um, turning lanes have cost and expense, and they also have right-of-way needs, the historic house. So there's, there's multiple decisions to be made in that process. That was on our radar, and the turning lanes were also on PennDOT's radar. So again, it was PennDOT that came to us and said, hey, instead of adding turning lanes, instead of adding more signal poles, instead of impacting this historic house, we have funding available that we will give you, as opposed to you spending on turning lanes, if you want to put in a roundabout. We will study it, we will analyze it, and we will help you design it, and then we will give you all of the construction funding for it. That's how we got here. And that, that study exists and that information exists. What's that? It's not designed to alleviate traffic. That's never been discussed. It's, it's, safer. it's safer than a signalized intersection. I, I don't have the speed or dimensions handy. I apologize, but that's all stuff I can get for you. Can we can get that to them? Uh, yeah, we'll, and we'll have that at the open house. for. Uh, that's not correct, no. That's incorrect. Okay. Give me your email address. We'll get it over. Yeah, there. I can get you any, any of that design information you want. That's again, we're not designing it and throwing it out there. It's designed, permitted by PennDOT. PennDOT approves it. We've designed this, 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 this is going to allow more traffic to flow through this intersection than a stop intersection, signalized intersection. I don't believe that's the case at this intersection, no. I can get whatever study PennDOT did on the track. I mean, that's PennDOT's information. I'll track it down. Gene Goebel, 7 Quaker Lane, at intersection, up to five or six cars backed up. He wants to pay for it. Yes, so be it, although we all pay state taxes, I think there's a lot of other places state money could be better utilized if they love traffic circles for some reason. Concord Road in Falk, that bypass that I understand is in Bethel Township, but to be more than 50% Concord Township, but there some huge traffic circle there. Uh, that, that, that has uh, Bethel, what, Aston? Bethel, Upper Chai, and Aston. Upper Chai. Um, Concord does not touch Concord. We, we, don't, we don't touch that at all. We stop at the creek at the bottom. Well, I, oh, I understand yeah. that, but no, I, half I, the traffic's got to be from Concord. Hey, we, we, go, we go every year. A and, mile back up. Oh, no, I agree. We go every year in the Riviera, and they always ask us, what can you do about that? We tell them it's, it's a Bethel. Uh, Bethel could probably be looking at something similar to this. Um, right. And I would encourage and that comes to you and says, we've got $3 million to put in a traffic circle. Now I if we don't need it there, can you say help our community uh, more? I don't, I don't we know. We talked about multiple different intersections in this township alone. We can't control, you know, again, I think that's a comment you could take to PennDOT and our state representatives. Um, that million, it's a million dollars we got for the roundabout, not $3 million. Um, the roundabout at that, you just said $3 million. We got a million dollars. The whole, say $3 million. Yeah, $3 million dollars is the project cost. Okay. We got a million right. dollars. We got a million dollars for the roundabout from PennDOT. The other money was from DVRPC through CMAC to fund the trail and the turning lane to school district. Um, regarding the Folk five-way intersection, again, that's completely in a different township. We would certainly support any efforts over there. Um, I know there's been studies over the year. Um, I would certainly welcome, con you, you know, contact Delaware County Planning Department, DVRPC, your state legislatures. All those people would be people to contact regarding the intersection improvements there. Okay, thank you. Sir in the back, ma'am, come up first. Don't worry about um, it. We haven't I either. Heard you say that roundabouts are safe. I haven't either. <laughs> and um, I understand that, but I think that this this intersection volume crosses seven and pattern of that is it cut. It's become so aggressive lately. It's really non-residential traffic that's you know on the rush hours. So traffic study is it specific to this intersection? Correct. It is. Correct. And it took into account all that. I, again, I, I don't have it. I can't say I've memorized it. Did PennDOT study or did Pannoni do that? PennDOT. PennDOT did. Do you have access to that? I, I probably have it in my file on my desk back at the office. I'm going to track it down. And I'll Publish that and Pannoni mm -hmm. 
audit that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like PennDOT is pushing we, the roundabout. Yeah, over, Penn, over PennDOT's consultant um, did the design. We helped supply some data, some information that we had, handy traffic counts, things of that nature. Again, the, the one we designed for Aston at the DC, DCU site is tons of school buses. I mean, school buses are not a problem for these. For these. It actually helps with the school buses. Um, I, I've got no qualms about safety. I, again, I think we're going in the right direction from safety. And again, I apologize. I'm not a traffic engineer by trade. My coworker is. He can speak up and down on the, you know, a four-way intersection has 27 conflict points and a roundabout has three conflict points. There's all these, all this data and safety that we can also provide that when the time comes, it's not going to be tomorrow. It's going to be sometime maybe the summer. We're going to start trying to get some of the information out because, unfortunately, I think the, the context out there in, in the you know, community might be negative when in reality it, it should be positive. And, and if it is, yep, that we need which is fair. Find a suspect and dot roundabout, and this is not. I would put roundabouts as an engineer. I would put roundabouts anywhere I feasibly could, 100% of the time. If the traffic and the warrants, it makes sense. It makes sense everywhere you can. Doesn't make sense a lot of places. We're not putting it on 202 anywhere tomorrow. You know what I mean? But I think there's a lot of intersections where I think it's worthwhile. New developments, I encourage it all the time. Well, yeah, we'll get that information out. And just, just so it's clear, too, and I just to follow up on that one point, again, we've been working through a lot of permitting requirements with PennDOT, and we've just gotten their sign-off on the design, and now is the time we were finally allowed to kind of get out there and start doing some more of the public information. Our hands were tied a little bit by the process, the federal process we were going through. We've just completed that over the past maybe two months, and we're going to be able to start getting a lot more information out. Hence the open house coming up. Ask you have a question about, and uh, the first thing I think would be very important to get the timing of that study, that traffic study was done. Um, this first came up ten years ago. I hope we're not looking at the traffic. We did the study was uh, 2016, maybe 2017. And then the other question would be just, you know, what is the delta or the difference in cost roundabout and long turn lane? How much is the turning lane project? Yeah, I mean, we could probably, if the township wanted us to estimate it, I'm sure we could. Um, we looked at it. I think, did we look at it? We looked at it before we got this far. I, I could probably track something down. It'll be, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, I mean, the roundabouts are radical change mm -hmm. versus putting some left hand. That's fair. Absolutely fair. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, look, off the cuff, you know, a roundabout might be, you know, the intersection, if we're doing the turning lanes, it's going to be in the three to $500,000, you know, cost pretty quickly between signal pull. I mean, maybe more than that, between the right-of-way, the, the widening, signal pulls. It gets up to half a million before you even realize it. So half a million to put the lanes in and Most likely. a million to do the roundabout? Nope. No, that's incorrect. And I'll repeat it again because it seems to be some confusion on it. The roundabout is approximately a million dollars. The entire project, including the turning lane at the school district and all the trails, adds up to closer to $3 million. So it's a million for the roundabout, roughly five hundred thousand for turning lanes. If we and if, if five hundred thousand was township money, the million dollars is pundit money. If we so um, the value goes from zero to five hundred thousand should be probably more the comparison. Also, uh, also if we own the right of way, and I also don't think you're ever going to get a left hand turn lane on Temple because of the house. Correct. From and, Temple to Smith Bridge. Yeah, mean? yeah, that's right. So well, well, you would acquire because like I mean. For the roundabout, you would be acquiring or taking over that land on the right with the open. That's ours. Yeah, we that own that. road was going to be moving anyway. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get you the number. Yeah, so but that's, yeah, but that's I think, open house. Look, when we have the open house, we'll have that. We're going to have a blow up of this roundabout, probably a you know, big poster size, so we can just dwell on that. And we'll have Mike Schneider, the uh, traffic guy here, and a couple other traffic yeah. guys. But we'll, we'll deal with all that. Okay. We're, we're still a year away from this thing happening, but. Okay. We figured we'd get it out there now. But we will get we will get those. You want it to pen dot? You want it to pen dot? I think that's a great point, oh, though. We'll get, so, we'll get all that stuff that you wanted. Yeah, so just yeah, a couple I think things. I still have your email. Yeah, so just a couple real quick things what I'm going to do is I'm going to track down the study of PennDOT completed for the analysis. We'll get that. Um, I'm going to cl clarify the uh, design speeds, the bus and truck design for the roundabout and the sizing. And um, I'm going to start uh, getting the information out with the township on some of the informational, educational things on roundabouts for everybody, including some locations nearby where you guys can go look at them and see them yourself. I also have some comps on what it would cost for the lanes versus the roundabout. But again, keep in mind, Penda was not giving us money to install the lanes. That was a township project. They were giving us money for the roundabout. So that's where that value proposition came in for us, where it was a, you know, maybe a half a million dollars for turning lanes. And don't quote me on that. I'm just throwing numbers out there. 
you know, maybe it was 400,000. Well, instead, one, Penn Dot saying, we'll give you all the money for the roundabout. So that was the value proposition in play, too. One, one, go ahead, I'm sorry. I would also think that the timing for turning lanes, heck of a lot faster. It's probably less, yeah. It probably is. Out. So if we're doing a summer project, the site of not the yeah, but, traffic. But, but yep. I, ge I, ge I guess, though, Small factor, it but yeah. might be faster, it might be cheaper, but is it better? Right. That's what we have to analyze. In the okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good comments. Yep. All right. We'll move right along here. Next item on our agenda is to go through the agenda for next week. So we get to do this all over again. Oh. Oh, yeah, what do you got there? That's still me. Here we go. Okay, so um, we You're have such a good job already. No. I, yeah, <laughs> that was great. Um, I don't have any fancy exhibits or too long of a talk on either of these projects, but uh, since we have a large audience, um, I just want to update everybody that we're in the process of finalizing two different capital projects. Um, first, you, well, you might not have seen it tonight because it's dark out, um, but the pickleball courts. Um, the pickleball courts are being installed. We've been working with the, I kid you not, the Garnet Valley Gherkins. Um, who are the pickleball, the local pickleball community who currently play at the BYC gym. Uh, they've been instrumental in seeing this to fruition um, and helping us literally design this to kind of meet what their needs are. Um, right now, we've kind of quasi stopped work for the winter. It's actually been a very mild winter, all things considered. Um, but this spring, we're gonna be wrapping that project up. Uh, we still have to install the surface. There's a small trail to be installed, um, some different various site amenities, and we'll be winding that down in the spring and we'll work with council on when we're gonna open that up setting up some rules and regulations and working with that Garney Valley Gherkins community. Oh, is she here? I didn't see her. the uh, champion is... of bringing this uh, project to our attention, Betty... and we look forward to having the dedication. Betty has been, Betty has been extremely helpful in, in helping us uh, along the way in a lot of facets of it, so we're looking forward to that one. Okay. Second is the dog park and volleyball courts. Um, again, we're, we're nearing completion on both those projects. We're, we're a little bit quasi shut down for the winter months. Again, ended up being a little bit milder than we thought. Uh, we still have some amenities, landscaping, some utility work to do at both of those sites. Uh, but again, work with council for some sort of opening, let's call it April-ish. Um, got some more landscaping to do, um, a few things to work on there. So we're winding down on that as well. We're not going to open the parking lot or the dog park until that time. Um, and then again, we're going to use the existing grass surface for the time being, see if we can make that work. Uh, and to talk about hours, operating hours, et cetera. So more to come on both of those projects, but looks like we'll be having some nice openings here. Hopefully, again, maybe both in April-ish, give or take. So knock on wood, uh, weather holds. Yes. No plan on tying the dog park across Smith walkway, sidewalks, or anything? We well, what's going to happen is the, the existing trail, the existing trail is, it loops around here, and this existing trail is all going to be tied into the rest of the trail. So it's all going to be tied in. Right now, we do not have a crossing at this location. The only crossing at Smithbridge is going to be here. That's for two reasons. One is we got to maximize safety, sight distance, et cetera. Two is we have that existing historic house that really jams us up on that northeast corner. And to put any sort of crossing where that house is is, is extremely difficult and problematic. So right now, the main crossing is envisioned as being right here, and then again, that trail loops in a couple different ways through that site. So but why, why is there an eight foot wide walkway then? It's gonna be on the south side of Smithbridge. Well, I understand that, and that's mm -hmm. very close to my house. I'm okay. concerned about where this eight foot wide asphalt trail, how many trees is down? I don't believe substantial amount of trees. I think we've been able that to- That red line goes right through. Well, again, keep in mind, this is, this is just, a, this is an aerial map and a sketch. Um, we laid this out, um, again, to minimize tree disturbance. So I don't believe there's a substantial amount of trees at all being removed. There might be a few here and there. Um, certainly something we could take a closer look at with any of the property owners nearby. And, and obviously, we, the township years ago made a commitment to, to anybody, you know, if landscaping needs are, are present, we'll, we'll address those as well. Yeah, I would, I mean, I, part of Concord Hunt, I would yep. want any tree that was removed Ab absolutely. along that way that blocks the view in place with, I mean, and unfortunately, you know, I've, I've, I live right on that cul-de-sac. And okay. I've lost, I've lost trees because of the age. I lost one a week ago. Yeah. And now I have a great view of the roundabout. Sure. I lost a, I lost a 40 foot tree a week ago. Yeah. And now I have a I can't, great view we, of where we can't, the roundabout's we can't, gonna be. We can't help you with 40 foot trees, but we can certainly help you with revegetating that area, absolutely. But what I'm, you know, what I'm concerned about is if, I, I've lost two trees in, in the last two years in my backyard. Mm -hmm. I've, been there since, I've, been, I've been a homeowner there since 1998. And I've lost two big trees. Mm -hmm. Which means I think some of the trees in our common area are destined to be falling down soon okay. as well. And I'm, you know, just concerned about yeah. having this. Which side of the trees is that walking trail uh, on? 
again, I, I'll bring the detailed plans of the open house. I want to say it meanders slightly. We're trying to avoid both utilities and the trees. So in one area, it makes sense to kind of slide further away from the road. In other places, we try to stay closer to the road. So there's a lot of things in play there. Um, but again, I think, I mean, I've walked that whole thing and we tried to meander it there the best we could. Right, and, then, and then the flip side is, you know, I'm concerned, of course, you know, for children walking that close. Say that I can hear you. you know, kids are walking along a sidewalk along Smithbridge Road. Mm -hmm know how people drive down there too. Mm -hmm. How close is the sidewalk to Smith Bridge? Sure. So, all right, so the, we'll, that won't be in this April meeting? April meeting, we'll be talking about any Smith Bridge Road stuff, more details, we can talk about landscaping. And, and, look, I think I, I, and I'm not speaking for all my colleagues, but I know a couple of us, if we need to meet you at your house and show you where it's gonna go, and if we gotta do a little detour around a tree, we're than willing to help you and try to make well, it. Well, it's part of the Homeowners Association land. I mean, yeah, well, I, I we mean, will meet I with the HOA. I hope you're not getting to my land. No, 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 no. No, no, a lot no, of no. I'm saying we will meet with the HOA, but yeah. if you back up to there, then we also want your opinion, because I, although I, yeah. the HOA is going to speak, you should let us know what you think. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we got it. I worked. We're there. We're with you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if, we, if we can make this the last one on this, because we were trying to get through. Eileen this. Johnson. I live over in Fox Hill Farm. Um, you know, the new dog park that you did with the little parking lot as it is right now, very close to where the traffic light is at Kirk Temple. Okay. And I don't mean to go back to the roundabout, but when that roundabout comes in, it's going to intrude on that little parking lot area. It's very close to it, isn't it? Um, I believe we meet the minimum distances, but I appreciate your comment. We'll take a, take a second look at that, too, because, yeah, coming in at different, that's a great comment. They're kind of coming in at different times, so I appreciate that. Okay. Next on our list is we're going to go over what... The meeting at, yes, one more, I'm sorry. Name, please. Iadoziak and Concord Hunt here. Okay. I guess the biggest thing is sign along Smith Ridge Road. Right. Very nice to have a sign here on Route 1. Show off our township. We're out of our country. Now I have white boys coming 350 feet from my property, so I have a light all night advertising Concord Township. The park's dawn to dusk. For some reason why we have that. The sign is, sign is supposed to go off at uh, 7 p.m. 7 uh, p.m. And I was on 4 o'clock this morning when I went to. All right. <coughs> it's been. Okay. All, now. All the time. All right, when we installed this one, we still have some settings to make. That should not be operating at its brightest lumen. We're going to have to tone that down, so it's basically just the message board similar to what you see at the school district or the church, the dark background and the light letter. But right now it's... No, right now it's, it sucks. You're right. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. No, you're right. Okay. Got it? Good. All right. Next is the uh, March 3rd meeting agenda. Pay the bills. We're going to recognize the Lego regional competition winner. We got some reappointments. Sean Lawler is going to re-up to the Planning Commission again. We have um, Denise Martin wants to re-up for Park and Rec, and Fred Glessner and Chip Price are re-upping for the Zoning Hearing Board. If we have to, we'll be doing that resolution regarding the condemnation of the easement in Concord Woods, but that's to be determined. We have an intermunicipal sewer agreement with. Um, Green Hill Farms, Chad's Ford Township, and Belcora. We're taking some of their sewage capacity. And in addition, we have a capacity reservation agreement to do. We will have the Carilla subdivision plan, which we went through earlier. The Astoria plan will be bumped to the 10th. Uh, we're going to award the bids for the preservation of the AME Church on Spring Valley Road. Bids actually came in under budget. That is funded through a community development block grant, so the match to re required by the township was basically just to do the architectural drawings. We're going to authorize the advertisement and the bid for the sewer projects of Penn's Grant 1 and 2. We're going to authorize the engineer to begin the Act 537 plan revision uh, for future fewer uh, sewer projects. We have the Concord Road North, which will take the sewer line from down at Il Grineo up Concord Road. Here to our building, which will also get these uh, buildings here in the island where the Grange and everything is. We will be doing Cambridge Downs and Clayton Park. And we're also doing what we call Smithbridge Conchester area. There's a small section of homes that are between the entrance to the high school and the overpass at Smithbridge Road. About 22 or 25 homes 
and we're going to get the Act 537 plan done. We're going to probably release some financial security, and we're going to accept this complete for filing. We have a uh, subdivision plan at 136 and 150 Matson Road, Fred Tordone. It looks like it's just a little two lot subdivision. House plus two. House. Ultimately going to be plus two building lots. House plus two, okay. It's four lots, but really two of those are existing lots with some modifications, so it's plus okay. two building so lots. We'll, we will deal with all that next week. Um, well, there are public comment. Ms. Webb, you had a comment, and we'll start with you, and then we'll get into everything else. We do have to uh, discuss a- Play with this. Sure, go ahead, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you're good. Well, I do have a question. I thought it was just Raise your hand if you know anything about Chief Roderick. How many of you pay your bill to Chief Okay, then you really want to stick around and listen to me. And I'll be real fast because I want to pay. I got a lot of information. All the I don't know who all all of that is. Authority asked. Second, I did some research. I could not conquer just four million. Six. Happy where it is. But we'll have to go back. That that was when this first came up. I remember they did a presentation here, and I I thought it was even before that. That's back like might be. I think it was before Amanda got here. If not, we we can pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Go right ahead. So. Those of you that do have Chester Water Authority, there are four or five messages out there. By the way, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to off. I live in Garnet Valley, and party, drink, my pets, whatever. The biggest challenge is that there is a hostile takeover by Aqua America now doing business with Central Utility Inc. Garnet Valley. Hoping to get it on the Concord Township. Happy to get out to you. It is highly controversial. They're basically trying to come and steal our water. If they, I don't know how many of you were here when they took over Springton Reservoir, when that was the assumption of Philadelphia suburban water. Um, they closed that off for activities. They, Aqua, sold all the property around it, high end homes, and got all their money back, but it closed off to residents. And they want to do that with Oxboro Reservoir, which is out there by the school. And if they get control of our water, they're, they're looking at $20 billion, and these are stats, $20 billion over the next 20 years they will have in profit. And the water bill and the sewage bill that each of us pay once a month, I mean quarterly, will become our once a month. Most people in Concord Township probably feel like they can afford that. I personally should own a natural resource. That's just my personal, you know. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. If you would, I'm going to give you my email. If you, my name is Web, but it's Chris A R I S I N D at iCloud.com. Get on um, Concord all this Concord customer and rate payers page is something. Google, if you WA, Chester Water Authority, all the information. I highly encourage you 
go there, read, get intelligent about what's happening, because what the city of Chester get out of an accident. Had them, basically, it's like he did all his allowance, and he was coming back home. Mom, Dad, I can't live on dollars a week, dollars a week. Have to. And that's basically in terms. So the city of Chester entertaining different proposals to sell Chester Water Authority. Number one, they don't own it. So it's illegal, it's heinous, and it's pretty ludicrous. Right now we are seeing 11 and those things are not particularly things we need to know about other than it's happening, but we need to we need to get all of our neighbors aware of what's going on. Pass the word. Gained a whole lot of traction when we opened. People are jumping on board. Anybody that wants to volunteer, out to trying to get a whole bunch of volunteers. We're trying to man the polls in April. Uh, we think we have until the seventh day before it goes back to Brian Spanier, who is the lawyer for Water Authority gotten very clever and legally clever about coming up with ways to put all of us that would hold it for the next 40 years. That might be me, but it's I probably in 40 years. But what about your family? really need people that are on wells in the area. Just be aware that you may be forced to pay into raise it. It really affects all of us. Part of situation, and you know, if you didn't see 2008 James Bond movie, where Tom and Solis, that's the name of the movie, find out what happens. All the water, and they run all the pipes. Really big story. I can't tell you about it here, but we have printed all the information. What goal? The goal is for us not to have Chester Water Authority sold out from beneath us by an illegal movement by the city of Chester. Your action item is out there, show up at meetings like this, out there, spread the word because call your state representative, call Senator, call anybody that. If if you send me an email, I'll send you the report that I was going to talk about. Five minutes. So I'll be happy to send it to you from Chester Water. And there's a whole, if you go to Chester Water Authority, they've got all the information. But if you're interested in volunteering, getting a petition, getting out there at the election, uh, the primary that's coming up, we've got a whole lot of branding that's going on with our company that is hired by Chester. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, having property in other municipalities. I have property in the Media Borough, and it used to be the Media Sewer Authority and the Media Water Authority. And as the bills were always great, uh, Aqua came in, bought the Sewer Authority, then bought the Water Authority. And I guess with the bill last quarter of last year, we got a rate increase. And nothing to say about it. They went right to the PUC, and they just raised everybody's rates. Didn't have to justify it. So the other thing to keep in mind is that if they do sell this, uh, it's going to be financed on the back of the ratepayers. We're going to end up paying something that just shouldn't. I applaud you for getting involved. Uh, I've known Frank Catania for a lot of years. You can't have a better ally on your side from a legal technician. So it should be interesting how this plays out. Plus, if I also understand what Chester is going to get the bailout for, we'll probably only keep them out of financial distress for about two years, and they're going to be right back in it again. So it doesn't make any sense at all should be financing that.
Josh Twersky, Concord Township. We got a lot of people out tonight. Social media works, Tom. Uh, Actually, I believe maybe that sign works as well. We're going we're gonna to talk about the sign right now, John. Uh, Concord Council over the last 11 years with Dominic Pelleggi at the helm was caught by yours truly robbing the good people of Concord Township of $12 million by overcollecting taxes. And now part of the continuing cover-up is spending those overcollected funds on, and I'm being nice as possible, the galactically stupid sign at Smithbridge Road Park. This past Thursday, February 20th, the sign went live, and I began receiving messages and pictures. On February 21st, I posted about the sign on social media. There was a lot of discussion. It actually set the record for the number of comments on the Barnet Valley uh, message board. And to say that the sign is not well liked is a huge understatement. But the most interesting social media comment was the following. Quote, the sign is to help inform residents of township meetings and events like the one at the municipal complex. It was just installed yesterday, and the brightness is being adjusted. Also, it will be turned off each night at 7 p.m. Josh's criticism is disingenuous at best, considering he voted to approve the expense and, and design of the sign, unquote. Who wrote that? John Crossan. Council member John Crossan. So let's break down that comment, quote, quote, Josh's criticism is disingenuous at best considering he voted to approve the expense and design of the sign, unquote. And you'll see how they try to instantly lay blame on me, anyone but themselves, and it's sad and it's lies, but they will probably continue to try to shift blame even after I'm done talking here tonight, and even after I remind them that I've voted against both the 2019 and the 2020 budget that funded the sign. My votes against the budgets are on video. And I'll do you one even better. I want to remind you all that Smithbridge Park signage is cryptically noted in the council work session minutes of September 24th, 2019. Dominic Pelleggi didn't allow the township to videotape work sessions then, so there is no video of that meeting. But you know what is on video? me at the October 15th, 2019, the next meeting, the council meeting, voting against the September 24th, 2019 minutes. That's on video, check it out. That's the reason my response to council member Croston's post was hashtag bullshit, hashtag fake news. Mr. Tversky, you will conduct yourself but with decorum Crossen, in this room and you will but, stop but behaving Crossen's, like a child. But Crossan's comments on township policy begs further questions, such as why, if we already have a digital sign right here at the township building that informs residents of meetings and events, would we need another one at the cost of tens of thousands of dollars? And even more blindingly nuts is the statement that the sign will be turned off each night at 7 p.m. So let me get this straight. Council spends tens of thousands of dollars on a lighted digital sign that's going to be shut off at night. It's bad government. Anyone else for public comment? No, no Mr. Tversky. I, I would just like to clarify a couple of things. One, um, did you distort the pictures that you posted on Facebook? I, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm, it's a question. I'm asking, did, did you just distort the pictures? And, um, were you a, a liaison to Parks and Recreation, the Parks and Rec Department in 2018 from Council 20, 2018? Yes, you were the... And isn't it true that the Parks and Rec Department has been asking for a sign upgrade for a number of years? Correct, because that sign, the existing sign was faded and old and illegible and unable to promote the events such as the Easter Egg Hunt and the Fall Harvest Festival that they work very hard at and which we provide to the community as a service. And our new sign, which I think looks good. Uh, now, taste is subjective, and so we're certainly able to disagree on that. Uh, but it certainly is informing residents. Um, and in terms of the sign being off, turned off at night, I believe that is to prevent light pollution 
which is in the interest of the community, and it can be lit during the day to illuminate the messages that we're trying to convey to folks as they drive past to and from work, uh, and as well as accessing the park, which while this sign out here does inform a lot of folks, uh, I believe that most of our residents probably will be driving down Smithbridge Road and see that sign. And so I believe that it is a, it is a good idea. Um, secondly, with regard to the, to the minutes, um, did you, you noted that you didn't vote to approve those September minutes. Was the reason, specific reason, that you voted not to approve the minutes specifically because of the, the signage comment? Well, I have a copy of the minutes here, which are also available on the website for anyone to read. And if you look at those minutes, you will see that you are in attendance at that, and you will see multiple points throughout where you, your comments are noted, where my comments are noted, where all sorts of comments, whenever they were made, are noted. And yet, when we get to Smithbridge Park sign, uh, nope. signage, then it says, Council agreed. And there's no discussion about any uh, dissent or, or comments against this, uh, and we did as, as a council unanimously agreed like that I night said, on the design. Cryptic. Council agreed, and first of all, this is great. No, read, read the whole minute. Sorry. Mr. Tversky, I believe the whole minute. The oh, it's completely I would like, cryptic. I would like for you to. Oh, here we go. All right, oh, look, Josh, we're done. Josh, the reason a lot, of those, a lot of those minutes were not approved because you wanted to have Libby Salvucci publicly reprimanded. You wanted me to pay for a piece of literature. That's the stuff you wanted in the minutes. And that's why you voted no. no it had nothing to do with the sign or anything that like incorrect. that. Incorrect. You haven't done anything that hasn't been for Josh and Josh alone since you got here. Now, we're going to move this meeting along. Anyone else with public comment? Just request Thanks for blaming me. I would just request, Mr. Tversky, that you behave yourself with more civility and maturity okay, in let's, social let's, media let's, let's so let's that uh, okay. you're not trying to incite I, the public with misinformation. Okay. Got one? Ma'am, we'll get to you next, okay? Yeah. So how you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight is as the 322 projects getting to the point where finish phase one, we will one way in, one way out, fight in park. Belt, built. Stub Road plan to go back out onto Feather Bay. For reasons unknown, that was stopped. Felt community to have in one way out. Concern is, as our development grows, we now have four houses. We now have school age children. Buses leave. Forced to go right down on the we two. We'll have to go down to six one. Back. It's the public safety. Something that roads partially there. Pull at the corner property that stub roads in to take it over. Access to it. It won't even allow people to. We we talked about this. Yeah. first started yeah. doing the PennDOT plan, and we were actually, if I recall, we were trying to convince PennDOT to put that connector road in the feather bed, and they could cut off the access to Clayton Park. They had a way out at the red light. Right. And then, Nate, we looked at this quite a few times, and then we sort of, it fell off the radar, but I, I my colleagues here probably, they, they don't remember this, but Maybe if you could bring it up next time yeah, we're together. I, I do recall we, we, we did some concept sketches. I mean, it's probably going back 10 years maybe. A little more. More, more than that. <laughs> um, I do recall there's multiple private properties in between. And, and well, you know, finding the path being the difficult part, if I recall well, we, correctly. This was the most direct. Correct. <clears throat> there was talk of shutting off entrance from. Now we're going to have a turning lane turning right into the project, into our property, expand, which is to help. But going out to go eastbound, there's no acceleration. And 
the school buses are coming out, now it's two lanes each direction, into a one-lane area of construction. At least with Clayton Park Drive, they could make right um, Beavertown, is that, that road, where the red light is. You're coming out of Clayton Park, right, make another right at the red light. Featherbed? Oh, Featherbed, feather feather yeah. yeah Featherbed right. matching. All right. I, I'll tell you what. Let's dig it out again. Let's okay. see if we can't get another meeting with you. And we'll Sir. Sir, will you repeat your name again for me? So I have it. Thank you so much. Uh, and and uh, right ma'am, you're next. Hey, sorry about that. And I'll get you. Christina Napolitan. I live at 928 Smith Ridge Road, just past Maple Lane there. And I'm just going to um, go back to the roundabout thing for one minute. The only concern is that because of where my house is located, I'm not in a development. And I know you said that there are studies that the roundabouts are safer. Um, but my only concern is without a light at that intersection there, is it going to make this worse coming down Smith Ridge? Because I honestly say a prayer every time I pull out of my driveway. You think that's going to affect? I think I sort of heard. I apologize. I think I sort of heard, heard the question. I mean, again, I think uh, the roundabouts, by their nature, the pedestrian and crossing we're putting in, the trail networks we're putting in, are actually all traffic calming type features. It doesn't extend all the way down to Maple. Maple being across from Foxhole Farm. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So it doesn't extend all the way down there. You know, I, I think that's a tough intersection. I want to hear it. I think that's another good intersection for a roundabout. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not everybody wants to hear that, but I think it's a very good intersection for a roundabout. And I, th I think having two roundabouts there would be certainly traffic calming uh, aspect to the entire scenario. And that would be a preferred. For a, yeah, maybe. Um, but, we, you know, we don't have anything currently in the, in the plan for that, that area right there. We only are extending to the intersection of uh, Kirk and uh, Temple. Part of the HOA? I am not. I actually am at 928. Can you make Ridge? sure we get your name? Because when we have this meeting, we want to make sure you get invited. Yes, that would okay. be great. Amanda, okay. Um, we had one more. Yes, yeah. And then we're going back there. Okay, yes, ma'am. Brought up from the other gentleman on 322. Um, for the light at Featherbed and Matson, you know, now with the big project going on, the lights have to be realigned. Because when I come home from work in the evening to go make a left on Featherbed, I have to be all the way out. I can't see the traffic light. I've got to wait for that traffic to stop and to turn left. I think right now they're yeah. suspended by cable, so I think once the arms are put in place, they were temporary. That problem. Yeah. yeah, they were temporary because of an accident that happened on that road. Okay. Yes, sir. I came here to the meeting trying to find out about this. Okay. Basically, I had a couple one, I drive up down into two roundabouts. At the Votec. I drive there times a day. Yeah. I see nothing but landscapers pulling a trailer, driving over top of it. Good point. Circle, I hear what you're saying about the circles. Circles don't work unless it's that's two, but he works for Wade. And he does algorithms at work. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to stay out of the yeah. neighborhoods? Yeah. Exactly. And so I had I had I asked him a question. And I asked him a simple question. Having ways out there now with the algorithm and everything like that, why is everybody complaining? It started with Alan Alda complaining about everybody. What happens is algorithm figures out speed and trajectory native. What they don't anticipate ten years in the where more congestion happens. Ways draws everyone. So putting a roundabout in sounds like a great idea. Two thousand twenty. Two thousand twenty five. Terrible idea. Growing traffic. Now, everybody and their grandmothers coming down Smith, all the way down, up over, and then they're going to cut down Ivy Mills to try and get to Valley Brook, circumvent everything. I know Ivy Mills is a cut down. 
Yeah, so that's the point of one of the city council. Okay. Really, really on this idea of a roundabout because oh. we're not really thinking about 2025. Here. I believe, and I'll. A lot of kids. Yeah, and I'll. Zones. Good point. Yeah, not to cut you off, I'm, I'm going to track down this, the analysis that PennDOT did. I'm fairly certain, but again, it's been two years. That considers 2035, 2040 math. So I'll grab that and, and see what that says. I got a buddy at Waze who disagrees with PennDOT. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, Waze doesn't do anything for us, so I, I, not much, I can, not much, they're not helping us. So. Can, can, we have, can we have somebody from PennDOT here that night? Um, I can't commit to that. I don't know. We'll see if we can. Okay. We, no, no, really. No, the answer is the thing. But, it, but a simple question what, that I came here with. So the roundabout is basically, they, they came to you guys and give you a million bucks to put a roundabout in. We're happy to do it. Hey, we love the idea of a roundabout. No, thank you. Huh? Are we stuck? No, no, I don't think we're stuck Option with anything, a, but let's, only. let's. I think it's going to either, I think, in my opinion, it's going to answer a lot of questions and right. maybe some people's minds, and maybe it won't. Right. We'll have to get one more meeting, but I think we need to break that down in a smaller group. Got it. All right. Next is John, you want to handle a redistricting request? Here? Oh, here he is. Hey, Sid, how are you? We told you that we were going to reconsider. Just we were to gonna... answer questions. I'm here just to answer your question. Yeah, I, I, I personally, and I, I, I appreciate you coming in last time, uh, talking about uh, asking the township if they would consider a resolution in support of the um, districting plan. And I think I expressed my personal opinion as one of seven. I was uncomfortable in recommending that council to vote on. I felt that although it seems like a worthwhile clause and it is a worthwhile clause, I think that my capacity as an elected official of the residents of Concord Township, I think each resident, if they feel this way, should be contacting their state rep or their state senator or their higher official, tell them to support them. So I, I, I will be one that will not in favor of having, I, w I would vote no to having us put on the agenda a vote to, as a township board to support the plan. Personally, I think it's a good idea. No, Sid and I have talked uh, extensively on the phone and over email, and um, no, he, he understands my position. Thank you. So, are we in favor of putting it on the bat on, on the vote next week, or do we just want to uh, pass on this? I would like to pass on it. I vote to pass. Yes. Well, Sid, happy individually. I will call. In fact, I have to call Barar and Killian. I will ask them for their support well, on this. Uh, Senator Killian on our side Good. already. There are bills, legislature is looking high power help to the individual citizens. Well, I think individual citizens, if everyone in this room is in support of it, and I sure Sid will uh, stay around and talk to you about it. I think all your, all, all Barar and whoever else we need to call. Has Barar committed to it yet? Steve? Good. Well, Sid, do you, do you have a sample letter that the residents could use? Maybe you could give us a sample or a draft letter, hand it out to people and ask them to send it in? Uh, I think I can do that. That would be good. I think it would be more bang for the buck doing it that way. Put it in your newsletter. Sid? Sid, if you, if you bring that sample letter to next week's meeting, we can have it in the back for people to pick up if they want to pick it up and take it with them. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Amanda, Township Manager, State of the Township. Um, so uh, this is a charter requirement. I always give my quick high-level speech about um, it's normally these are done by politicians, not necessarily the manager. I don't mind the idea of it, um, but I'm not a politician, so I am very apolitical, and I work for you and council. Um, so uh, 
and it's a little difficult because this is supposed to be done prior to actual audits being complete, so I don't really give numbers. There's other times throughout the years and other reports that I do throughout the year where I give numbers specifically, um, especially around budget time and after the audit, I do a little presentation. So council has actually requested that I do a real presentation sort of uh, discussion of the state of the township at the regular public meeting, which we've done the last couple years, same thing. Um, but you know what I what I can say very briefly, and I'll have this published on the website next week, um, like we've done in the past, is that um, you know things are pretty good in Concord Township. I've worked in multiple municipalities. Um, things I've been in full service municipalities where they have police and public works, and I've been here, and you know things are pretty good. Um, our fund balances are healthy. Um, we have great bond ratings. Um, we have, you know, this is a great place whether you've lived here for 30 years or you just moved here five years ago. And if you've just moved here five years ago, you moved here for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have, um, you know, a great thing going here. Our school districts are fantastic. Um, it's a really, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, um, I've been here for a number of years now, is, you know, they grew up, went to Garnet Valley High School, have a business here, and are raising their families here. And I think that's quite lovely. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, immensely. Um, I, you know, there's other things that I can hit on when we get into it uh, next week, um, but I highlight fiscal leadership, the team work that's here, and all the things that we're doing. I also highlight some opportunities and challenges ahead. Uh, sort of when I come into any role, I always do sort of that old school business SWOT analysis, and you take a look at things and you try to figure it out. I actually hope to do that this year with council because we have some new members. Um, but so I tried to highlight some of those areas as far as sustainability, open space, grants, capital planning. So I'll, I'll provide more highlights at next week if people want to come. I'll also have it um, published on our website. Um, it'll look like this. Um, and I've given it to council as per the charter. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Then okay. after that, it will be online be on the website. Uh, Newland Grits Mill Earth Day Partnership. Uh, we're going to be sure. doing something with them? Sure. So very exciting. As part of a lot of our public engagement initiatives and all the things you're going to see in my state of the township and all the great things that we've been trying to do, it's that book from Daniel Pink, Good to Great. That's where we're trying to get. Um, so one of the things that we've been trying to do, I mean, Newland Grismo, you want to talk about open space and preservation in our community. We don't have a greater gem. They are fantastic. They are run by folks who know exactly what they're doing and travel the world to do what they do. Um, there's a lot of people that get involved over there. I highly encourage people to get involved over there. Um, the amount of land that they save in this township is immense. Pay attention and contribute is, is my usual talk. Newland Gristmill? The Newland Gristmill, yep. They're a steward of a lot of land, a good steward. Yep, and our water sheds, so we're, we're thrilled. Um, additionally, um, we are partnering with them. So uh, we've been working on this for a couple years. Newland Grismal has a lot of board members as compared to me. I always think seven's a lot, but they've got like 14 or something. So um, there's a lot of folks to coordinate with, and we are really excited. Uh, we're going to be partnering with them uh, for Earth Day activities. As most people know, it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And council, I'll be putting them to work. Um, on April the 18th, we're actually, uh, they've requested some funding. Uh, we'll be using some of our tree fund monies to help them rebuild um, the wetlands, a huge wetlands area. Um, and all the native plants will be supplying for them. Additionally, we'll be prying, supplying some mussel as I look down this group over here. And um, a working group uh, will be including committee members and others. Um, they ha it's a very large event for them, and I think they sort of cap it off because they get well over 100 people to participate. Um, we're very excited to do that with them, um, greening everything up. And uh, we'll have more to come on that, actually, um, and I'm hoping to have somebody come to one of our meetings to do that. But we will be contributing some funds uh, with council's approve approval. And you have a letter from... Um, uh, one of the uh, employees there, and I just want to make sure everybody's on board uh, with us contributing. Um, I think it's about $400 for the um, wetlands materials and some muscle and some other. Smithbridge Park enhancements, <coughs> Coleman Trail opening, we're going to be planning for those in the future. 
Tom committed proposed project route 202 and one design criteria. He's submitting something for us. So are you talking to me about Tom Kavita's design, right? Yeah. Sorry, my brain got pulled. Um, so yes, so we talked about this last year. This was actually talked about as part of budget. Um, as part of, we, I, I'm not sure if a lot of folks know, but uh, you know, the 202 one corridor we've been looking a lot at. So um, what happens with land development is, you know, when they first come in, we have all the control in the world, right? We have design control, we make them do X. But after it's been here for 30 years and they just want to change some things, we don't necessarily have control. And the idea from council was at the time talking with our land planner uh, was how do we come up with some design criteria that makes sense? I mean, the difficult part here is we share that border with another municipality, right? But we can um, do all that we can to make sure that uh, a lot of that a lot of that development will eventually be redevelopment. And it's making sure that we can have some standards in place and have some teeth to say to these property owners, like if you just saw the hotel that got redone by Dunkin' Donuts, I think that's Comfort Inn now. Um, we, we work, they worked with us on doing that and colors. Um, however, you know, I, they didn't have to. Um, and that's sort of the short of it. And uh, we are looking to put in some standards and Tom Kamita is- More to follow. On. Yep. Okay, that being said, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying what? Yeah. Aye. Good? Aye. 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 All right, we're going home. Thank you. Uh -oh. You did.